Welcome everybody to my video, my first ever NBA YouTube video. This is Meteor Jam. Thank you for tuning in. Today's topic is on the German Daddy. Um, well, let, let, let's introduce him real quick. Here he is in the process of sunning Chris Bosch. He actually had uh, many sons in this um, in, in, in that series. That's why he's a German Daddy. But but that's neither here nor there. So. You know, we'll we'll let, let let let's let's move on. You know, let's let's talk about Dirk. Um, you know, I, I think he's the goat. I think he's, and when I say that, I don't mean he's like the greatest of all time, but I mean he's like he, there's not there's not gonna be another Dirk. That that's what I'm what I'm trying to say. Like he he's a legend. He's he's a legend, and he's he's an all time great and at least in the power forward position, like a lot of people, are, they're going to talk about Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, uh, Barkley, and they're going to put them higher than Dirk because, you know, they might have like slightly better defense, rebounding. But what people don't understand is like in this one, in this playoffs, 2011 playoffs right there, the the dominance and the greatness that Dirk showed in just that one playoffs run, I think puts him above the rest of them. And you might say like, oh, well, how are you gonna say that just off of one playoffs? Well, because those guys couldn't have done what Dirk did in that one playoffs. That's why I put Dirk above anybody and everybody uh, when it comes to the power forward position. And to ju to understand just how dominant he was, um, you know, we can look at some of the stats to really show how he impacted his team, to show just how important he was to his team. So so let, let, let's look at some of those, you know, okay. So here you got Dirk. This is an on-off court comparison. So we're looking at the 2011 playoffs on a per-minute basis. And we're looking at it at a per-minute basis, and we're looking at what how the Mavericks did when Dirk was on the court versus how the Mavericks did when Dirk was off the court. So when Dirk was on the court, they scored 2.09 points per minute. When Dirk was off the court, they scored 1.81 points per minute. Um, but we, we're not trying to look at points. We want to look at this right here, the, this, this statistical category plus minus. So all plus minus is really talking about is how much did one team outscore the other. So when Dirk is on the court, the Mavericks, they outscored opponents in the playoffs, 2011 playoffs, by 0 0.21 points per minute. Okay, so you know, you, you, can, you can do the math on that. You just got to do 48 minutes times 0 0.21, and that will tell you, you know, by how many points they outscored opponents on average and then when Dirk Dirk was not on the court they got outscored they were outscored by other teams by 0.27 points so you can just see that how big of a difference that is like 0.21 to negative 0.27 like that is that is a huge difference and that just shows you how important Dirk was to that team and how much he had to carry because it was like when he wasn't on the court I mean, the Mavericks were, were like the Suns or the Kings from from this last season. You know, like it's like they forgot how to play basketball. And then when Dirk was on the court, they were they were destroying. So I mean, that's just that. Like I don't think any other great Duncan, you know, all those guys. I don't think they they had you know a, a on off plus minus like that. And you know, I I try to check. You know, I try to check like Tim Tim Duncan. But like he, he doesn't show up, so you can only really pick players that, that are active, that are still in the league. So I did do it for King James, LeBron James, you know, just to see what, what his numbers were like. And I decided to do the 2016 season, uh, the playoffs. Uh, you know, this is a season where like, you know, Cleveland, th this is for you. Um, you know, they came back down one three three one to the Warriors and and you know brought home the championship to Cleveland so this was a really big year so how did look Le, how what what impact did LeBron have so when LeBron was on the court 
the Cavaliers, they outscored opponents by 0. 0.25 points. Okay, and when LeBron was off the court, they got outscored by 0. 0.15 points. So, so that's, that is, you know, pretty good. But let, let, let's just check. Let's just check who had the bigger impact. So we're going to have to break out the calculator real quick. We're going to have to break out the calculator real quick. Um, okay, so Dirk is 0.21 minus negative 0.27. So let's do that. 0.21 minus 0.27. Got to make it negative. 0 0.48. That's 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 the net change per minute. All right. That's how much value Dirk is adding per minute. 0.48 points um, over the other team per minute. So now let's do it for LeBron. 0.25 minus 0.15 make a negative equals 0 0.4 so 0 0.48 minus 0 0.4 Dirk Dirk has the edge and uh you know sorry I gotta bring this up but you know somebody gotta bring it up all right we we gotta understand the level of competition that these two guys were facing I mean obviously Golden State is a great team but if you look at the Eastern Conference I mean that they they were going up against you know like Raptors and uh, I don't know who else they face, but I mean, like, you know, not teams that are really all that good. Now, you look at Dirk. Who did Dirk have to go up against? So first round, he went up against Blazers. They had LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, they, they had a few other good players, too. Uh, I like, think, like, um, Wesley Matthews, Gerald Wallace. Uh, they, they, they were decent. But then after that, they had Kobe and Gasol. They swept them. And then after that, they had OKC with their young big three of Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. That same team, which went to the finals the very next year, they beat them uh, in five games. And then finally, they had the Miami Heat big three. So the level of competition that Dirk had to go up against, you know, and still, he had such a good plus minus. I mean, that's that's really saying something about about his greatness. So that that that's just one thing. That's only one aspect. And then another thing I realized is Dirk is 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 a is a killer. Dirk is a killer, and that's that's one thing. I mean, if you look at him, you know, it's kind of looking at Bird too. You you know, they're not obviously the most athletic. They're not. They don't got like that mean Kobe face. You know, that black Mamba face that. They they don't really have that that image of a killer, but but they are killers for sure. They are killers for sure. So you we can just look at the stats. All right, we we're looking at the stats right now. We get we got the twenty eleven playoffs per game. All right, and we're looking at fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, what was the scoring? All right, guess what? Dirk Nowitzki leads everybody per game. Nine point nine points per game. And, you know, not only is he leading, I mean, just look at this efficiency, man. 51.3% field goal percentage. 53.3% three-point percentage. 94.1% free throw percentage. I mean, this guy was not only clutch in the fourth quarter, but he was like, he he, he was not missing. I mean, that's just how, how good he was. And, I mean, it, like, okay, fourth quarter. But let, let's look at more of the high pressure situations. So right now we're looking at we're looking at uh, clutch player clutch situations 2011 playoffs, and we're looking at it if if it was within the last five minutes of the game, um, if the score was uh, tied or if they were behind by five points or less. Okay, so that that's the situations we're looking at, and we got some players here only played one you know one game so let's let's try to make let, let's try to change that games played greater than or equal to two no actually let's let's do four greater than or equal to four all right we'll run it again Dirk is at the top he was the most clutch player in the 2011 playoffs 4.1 points per game in the last five minutes in clutch situations, I mean, that is 
there's really something. I mean, this guy, this guy's a killer. And, and, you know, so next time when somebody says, you know, Dirk's not a killer, I mean, just pull up these stats and, and show them. So, like, th that that really just goes to show how legendary this guy was in the playoffs. I mean, he was not only impacting his team so heavily, but he was also coming in clutch at, in those clutch situations. So, you know, obviously the stats are one thing, but they might not really you know, hit home. So let's, let's try to, let's try to get in some of the, uh, some of the video footage. Um, Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, clutch 2011. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. I don't know which one to choose. Uh, let, let's we can go with this first one. After that bucket, and Portland back up two. So Here's Nowitzki, long range, his first three-point attempt. So we're gonna analyze some of the footage. Miller, Dirk with the spin, it in and the foul. We're gonna analyze some of the footage. I'm gonna go ahead and, and fast forward a little bit. Oh yeah, it's a good one. He embarrassed Ibaka in this series, man. Again, look at that ISO. Ibaka got no chance. Boom. Game over. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, here we are. So this is something else, man, alright? I want to pause the video right here because I just want to show you What's going on? You got four guys around Dirk. I mean, just look at that. Like, is Tim Duncan going to do that? Did he ever do that? How about Kevin Garnett, Charles Barkley? Uh, who's the other guy? Karl Malone. I don't think this situation is something that those other guys are, are going to create for their team. Because they don't have that, I mean, I don't know. Actually, I don't know what the reason for it is. But I think it just speaks to Dirk's greatness, why he's a legend. And I mean, look at these guys, you know, Jason Kidd over here just chilling. Sean Marion over here just chilling. LeBron James, his attention is all on Dirk. He's trying to cut off Dirk in case he comes, Dirk cuts in through here. You know, I mean, that's just the level of attention that Dirk was uh, attracting he was he was a force of nature man he was attracting all that attention that's why he was so great this series I mean I don't think any other power forward is gonna is gonna create a situation like that for his team okay the wide open shot sorry let me let me just rewind real quick So again, again, you can just see, I mean, there aren't four players surrounding him, but look at every uh, Heat player, Dwayne Wade, where is he looking at Dirk? Uh, I'm not sure who that is. I think, I think it's Bosch. He's looking at Dirk. Haslam, looking at Dirk. LeBron, looking at Dirk. Uh, Mario Chalmers, looking at Dirk. Just look at, so, so this, this is actually a, a real phenomenon in and in NBA statistics it is something called gravity is something called gravity he's because it's like gravity he's attracting the attention attracting and not just attention look like everybody seems to be kind of moving towards him you know you look at the distance between all the other players I mean look at look at the distance for Jason Kidd man I mean they're like they're not even guarding him they're not even guarding him they're like yo let just just we don't care about kid we don't care about kid but I'll, 
I'm pretty sure Kid's gonna get wide open three pointer. But but the problem is that Dirk was so legendary, was so dominant in this game that it was like they just didn't care about nobody else. Look at that. And then and the LeBron James right there. You can see LeBron James yelling at Mario Chalmers. I mean, why the hell is he yelling at Mario Chalmers? Because that. I mean, let, let, let's see who who was at fault in this defensive possession, or yeah, uh, in this defensive possession. So I mean, he, like both him and Chalmers are kind of, you know drifting away from their defensive assignments so i mean there's really no reason for him to yell at chalmers i mean he's equally to blame for that for that possession so i mean lebron being lebron you know and then let's let, let's look at this one again so here you got chris bosh and lebron trying to trap jason terry I don't know why that was the the decision that was made. I think that was not a smart move, because here you can see uh, Dirk rolling. Um, he's rolling, and Bosch is basically playing off of Dirk. And I think maybe they were trying a new tactic, trying to trap Terry, force him to, you know, uh, turn over the ball. But clearly, it doesn't work. Boom, ball goes to Dirk. Money all day. Money all day. And you know, th th this is basically the entire series. And look at the time on the clock. This is fourth quarter clutch time. Dirk is just going off. Boom. Oh boy. Legend. He's a legend. Here it comes. Here it comes. Boom. Game over. Oh, actually, I think I think they might have lost this game. Oh, oh. Actually, hold on. We need to talk about that 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 position right there. All right. So you got three point six seconds left. You're only down by two, right? So it's possible to po to potentially tie up the game, make an effort to get back in the game. But look, just just watch LeBron James. All right, LeBron James is right here. Just watch LeBron James. What what he does. So Wade Wade is gonna pass him the ball. Wade is gonna pass him the ball. LeBron James is taking it up. LeBron James passes it back to Dwayne Wade. With 1.9 seconds remaining. And look at where Wade is. He's not even past half court yet. Okay. So not only has he deferred. But he has deferred in a way that puts the Heat in a terrible position. I mean if you're going to defer. At least pass to this guy. He look, look, look how open and how much closer he is to the hoop than Wade is. I mean like for all the talk about LeBron James basketball IQ. That was that was a terrible play. That was a terrible pass. And you're only down by two points with four seconds to go. I mean, that's d definitely doable to tie up the game. And instead, he's deferring to Wade here instead of passing to this guy over here who's wide open and who's already passed half court. So, I mean, and then now Wade just has to chuck it. You know, terrible shot. It was actually pretty close, but I mean... So, so yeah, I mean, we can watch these highlights. Dirk just being a killer. Fourth quarter time is Dirk time. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Let's see. Let's see this one. Left-handed layups all day. That was, that was the key. Um... Left-handed layups. Oh, 
Stops on a dime, boom, swish. Left hand, left hand, all day, every day. They had no answer for that left hand layup. That was that was the heat's demise right there. So that that that's what I have to say about Dirk Nowitzki, legend of the game, um, the goat power forward. I think in my mind, I I hope that the stats and the in the video footage, um, you know made a strong case for why I believe Dirk, in my opinion, is, is the best power forward over Tim Duncan, over, um, um, you know, Carmelo, Kevin Garnett, whoever, simply because of the impact on the rest of the team. You know, I, I just think that, you know, considering the talent on his team, you know, you got like Jason Terry, who's like a midget, and then you got 38-year-old Jason Kidd, you got Tyson Chandler, who's who's great defensively, and at rebounding, but I mean, offensively, not anything too special. So I mean, you're you're looking at a guy who who beat Kobe's Lakers, LeBron and Wade's Heat. I mean, it's it's an amazing, amazing playoff run. It's legendary. So you heard it here first. The German daddy, daddy of LeBron James. Dirk Nowitzki, y'all. Actually, uh, just uh, stick around. Just got to show y'all one thing real quick. Just got to show y'all one thing real quick. Let's see. Percent from downtown in the playoffs. Nowitzki, tough fall away. Backs it in. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there it is. Okay, I got a treat for y'all who stuck till the very end. Watch this right here. Oh, okay, okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, all right. Ah, ah. Oh, got him. Got him, bruh. Oh man. Let's watch it. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. Oh man. Oh, okay. So this is why this is why he's the German daddy. He's like LeBron James. LeBron James. I'm the daddy. And he said, okay. Okay, Dirk Nowitzki, you're my daddy. But I got many daddies, so you're gonna be my German daddy. And Dirk said, okay. I'm the German daddy. German daddy, y'all. Go. Go player. You heard it here first. Peace out.